Hello, everyone, and welcome to Louisiana Technology Park's Tech Park Academy. I'm Stephen Loy with the Louisiana Technology Park. We're the hub for technology-enabled companies in our region. If we can help, please reach out to us, reach out to us at latechpark.com. Now more than ever, we are supporting our entrepreneurs, and we want to help you. We usually have these monthly lunch and learns at the Tech Park, but I'm so grateful to wonderful staff here at the Tech Park and our sister company, Nexus LA, for making this a virtual meeting. We want to keep you informed so as information becomes available, we'll initiate a Tech Park Academy to bring you updated information. So please make sure you're on our mailing list. Visit latechpark.com to keep up with what's happening. We will be recording this session, so um, if you miss something or need to come back and review it, please know it'll be ready uh, probably more this afternoon, um, but it will be recorded. I'll introduce our speakers in just a moment, but just a few notes of etiquette. Do not share proprietary information about yourself or your business here. We ask that anyone, if you have questions, and this is what this uh, webinar is designed to do, is to answer your specific questions, Please do it in the Q&A section at the bottom of your screen. Please do not use the chat function. And as we all know, the situation is changing rapidly, hour by hour. So today's information is current as of 10 o'clock this morning, April 3rd, 2020. So now first, let me introduce our speaker. First is Sushil Kumar. Sushil is an accomplished banker, communicator, and relationship builder. He is responsible for sharing vital information regarding federal disaster recovery programs to assist with rebuilding entire communities post disasters like Hurricane Sandy, the wildfires in California, tornadoes and floods, and of course the situation that we find ourselves in now. Our next speaker is Brian Greenwood. Brian is a business consultant, mentor, coach and advisor to Louisiana's entrepreneurs. His role is to assist entrepreneurs with solving business problems, developing new strategies, and building a plan to take their company to the next level of sales growth and profitability. He has successfully assisted entrepreneurs with developing packages to raise debt or equity for their business. Of course, I'd like to welcome Brenda Guest as well. Brenda is Director of Business Incentive Services at Louisiana Economic Development, a position she's held for 13 years. Brenda is a graduate of Southern University. Welcome all of our speakers, Cecile, Brian, and Brenda. Thank y'all, all three of you, for being here this uh, morning. Again, guys, I was, before I hand it off to Cecile, if you have uh, questions, please put it in the Q&A section, and we will make sure that our speakers are able to get to them um, at the end of their short presentations. With that, uh, Cecile, I hand it over to you. Good morning, sir. Appreciate it, panelists. Appreciate uh, you folks being on the call this morning. Uh, Ann Kelly, Brian, and, uh, and Nexus folks. I'm Sushil, I'm with the Office of Disaster Assistance, a Small Business Administration. And I wanted to share with you folks uh, details about our economic injury disaster loan process. I am trying to upload our, um, my screen and uh, looks like I am, I've lost the, um, I have lost the um, the up the share button. Anybody on the call help me probe? Possibly. Lauren, could you um, think if you can help share? Yes. My uh, screen just seems to have taken over. It's got a mind of its own, and I don't see the share that I saw before. Try Alt S. I'm sorry. Alt S. Alt S. Uh, this will stop other screen. Do you want to continue? Okay, fair enough. There we go. There. Can you guys see it? Yes, great. Mr. Greenwood, teamwork makes a dream work. Here we go. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So here we go. Uh, I'm with the Office of Disaster Assistance, as I mentioned. Our loan program, $2 million, statutory maximum, fixed interest rates for both private nonprofits and for businesses of all sizes. 2.75 for private nonprofits, 3.75% for businesses of all sizes. The picture that you see up front is our administrator. She's the one who declared the COVID-19 a, a disaster for us to pursue uh, economic disruption loans. What is it? What is an economic injury? Loans for working capital, 
four businesses, small, depending on your size, to agriculture cooperatives and aquaculture businesses. Uh, there are certain ineligible businesses, and uh, we won't talk about that yet, but some of them are hotels, souvenir shops, manufacturers, sport vendors, travel agencies, wholesalers, things along those lines. Here's where I started talking about, $2 million. Till recently, uh, there was a, a division of personal guarantees, and now, furthermore, under $200,000, it's been refined, where there are no personal guarantees. Anything over 200, we're still requiring it. Interest rate, as I briefly talked about, is 2.75% uh, for, um, uh, for nonprofits and 375 for small businesses. All loans are being amortized over a maximum 30-year time frame. every one of them. Size standards, if you're concerned about whether or not you're considered a small business, take a look at our hyperlink, and the proceeds come directly from the U.S. Treasury. What is a working capital loan, to put it very bluntly? It is really the subtraction of your liability, current liabilities, from your current assets. The expectation is that it's usually a ratio greater than one. If it's greater than one, the expectation is that the, uh, the company is solvent. Anything less than one, it's insolvent. What can you use the money for? Payroll costs. Everyone's got paycheck on their minds. It can be used for paychecks. It should be used for accounts payable, your vendors who you, who you owe money to, who you owe, when you owe, how much you owe, how much you owe, and if there is a, a security interest. Use it for current person long-term debt due, material costs or parts of your part of your uh, vendor costs, any rent or mortgage payments, and any and all bank debt that you might have in the form of line of credit and so on and so forth. Our website, covid19relief.sba. Gov. There is no collateral for under $500,000. A general UCC1 filing on business asset and a $100 fee to file the UCC1. Other than that, there are no points, there are no closing costs, there are no prepayment penalty. The first payment is due 12 months from now, and there is no obligation to take the loan if one is offered. This is the new feature that we had rolled out as of Monday this week, a few days ago. It be, once you go through your Q&A in the, in the application, it's a very streamlined application. It's just a, a factor of answering the question that's posed. At the very end, you'll be given an option to, um, to ask for an advance. Everyone's eligible. Uh, everyone's eligible to apply for the advance no requirement to repay it if you're turned down. And the funds are usually within three to five business days in your bank account. It's an advance, it's not a grant. It becomes a grant if the loan's turned down for, for reasons uh, only the lender and the applicant knows. And usually it's for delinquent credit and or delinquent tax payments. Uh, other than that, there are no requirement required docs. If, in case you're approved, it just means that the ten to up to ten thousand dollars is uh, deducted from your loan. So, for example, you approve for a hundred thousand, you get a ten thousand dollar advance. You have a ninety thousand dollars worth of monies, which will then be dispensed. We briefly talked about the uh, the uh, the uses. Let's talk about what you can't use it for. Don't borrow the money at 375 fix and then pay a long-term debt, which has a higher interest rate. Don't use it to pay any other agency debt. Don't use it to pay federal taxes that are due um, because if you already have, hello? I lost control. Okay, we'll go back That's to previous technology screen. taken over. <laughs> yes, sir. Isn't that what, they, what isn't what they were talking about in Terminator? <laughs> technology, the coming war, man will be made, rendered useless. <laughs> anyway, um, there we go. Let's go back. Oh, no. I guess. No, it's our specific page. Yes, sir. I'll. I'll. Okay. Um, I got the screen back, so I'll go back okay. here. Yeah, there we are. If you have a tax debt due, please don't um, pay it down. I mean, apply, um, use it for the purposes intended. 
We talked about our website. When you type in that website, this is what you see, disaster loan applications and how to apply for disaster loan. This is the very first screen that you get to see. It's a very streamlined application. I broke this page into half for the purposes of uh, clarity and visibility. Otherwise, the font would be too small. So on the top part of the page, all, you, all the applicant has to do is pick one of the business, business options offered in the form of radio button. Sushil, Sushil, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Can you make that, put that in presentation mode so it's be bigger on the screen for everyone? And I will, in, you want to take over and do that, sir? Uh, no, you press that there button. You there you go. There you go. Perfect. Somebody did. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Now, you were talking Greek to me there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. Thank you, Lauren, whoever did that. It wasn't me, whoever it was, appreciate it. So basically what you have is um, that. One of our um, attendees would go back to number 10. I'm sorry. Yeah, one of our attendees would go back to number 10. I'm sorry, that was really loud. I didn't hear you. Sorry, one of our attendees wants you to go back to number 10. To well, the 10. Okay. which one is 10 is it there you go okay um what is an acceptable criteria acceptable repayment in the form of credit history acceptable repayment in the form of your ability to cash flow historical ability to cash flow when you go to our website after you type this address in up top this is the page that you get to see streamlined basically disclosures top part of the page pick and choose which one applies to you if you're a business with no more than 500 you pick it if you're a business with more than 500 you pick this one down here Nonprofits go to the very bottom sore prop and independent contractors which is a new addition to our website goes in radio button number two answer questions about your business we'll see a brief glimpse of the, what that screen looks like your 100 percent ownership and details about your the business owner any additional information about the company, hit the, sum the summary button will pop up and it'll say, is this what you wanted to present? Question about the advance, submit, and it's in process after that. This is the bottom part of that first page where you have to certify that you are not involved in any illegal activities. These are ineligible uh, concerns. I'll leave it up there for folks to read. A little more details about the advance. Applicants are eligible for an advance up to 10,000. No documents required. No requirement to repay advance, even if denied. And that's when it becomes a grant. You'll probably hear a lot of chatter out there. I wanna apply for the forgivable grant. I wanna apply for the forgivable grant. You're not applying for the forgivable grant. What you're applying for is an economic injury disaster loan. And if you're not approved, the $10,000 becomes a grant. You can call our SBA customer service at 800-659-2955 for the deaf and hearing as a separate number or sending an email to our disaster customer service at sba.gov. Folks, just be, be careful. There's a lot of scammers and, and uh, fishers out there. They're representing already SBA when they're not supposed to be. For those folks who are Twitter savvy, uh, follow the Small Business Administration's tweets and several examples of what to look for are listed on it. This is what the application looks like up front. Legal name, trade name, if you're a sole prop, your organization type, and then so on and so forth. It's pretty straightforward. It's very much a Q&A. This one, I don't know if I can enlarge it any further. Wendy, Lauren, can you help me out if you can enlarge it any further? Um, so I, don't, I don't think we'll be able to Zoom. Yeah, that's what that was my concern. We'll, yeah, we'll make was, these slides available to everyone so um, they can, um, when they down, get the copy of the presentation, they can look have a uh, look at it. Thank you, Stephen. Much appreciated. Any questions? Reach out to me. And that's the end of my presentation. There was um, there was considerable changes early on. One was the personal guarantee changes, UCC filing fees. Um, and of course, um, other stuff that might come up. So I appreciate the disclaimer, uh, Stephen, that it's accurate as of now, because things are changing so rapidly 
that um, we want to make sure that we're not dealing from an old deck. Now, here's the other part that uh, everyone needs to know. If you applied for an economic injury disaster loan prior to Monday, you did not have an option to ask for an advance. Please go back, reapply so that you get the advance to relieve pressures on your payroll. And it's up to $10,000, not $10,000 max. It's up to $10,000. That's the end of my presentation. I'll pass okay. it on to you, Stephen. So, Shil, can you repeat that, please? Because that's important and make sure that everyone okay. heard that. Exactly. Thank you for asking. Um, it is an advance of up to $10,000. It's based on employee size. So in other words, if you have 10 employees, you'll get $10,000. If you have five employees, you get $5,000. Anybody thinking that they could apply for the grant and not apply for the loan and um, get their 10 grand and see what they can do uh, is probably mistaken. I've had that question posed to me several times over the past few days and I've actively discouraged that whole notion. They need to apply for the loan. If they don't get uh, qualified, they can get the monies that they qualify for and it basically works out to $1,000 per employee. Okay, great. Thank you, Sushil. But of now I'd like to hand the, uh, pro well, we will get to, um, to the, the questions for Sushil and SBA in just a moment. So please make sure you put those in the Q&A section, not in the chat se section. But now I'd like to uh, let Brenda guess with uh, Louisiana Economic Development um, talk. Brenda? Okay, am I on? Yes, thank you for okay, being here this morning. Good morning, uh, and thanks for pulling us together and, and including us in this presentation. Um, I think uh, we have uh, one other person from LED uh, on the line. Our undersecretary, Ann Villa, um, is not able to join us, but we just rolled out this program. The governor announced the program on, um, I think, Wednesday, and it's the uh, uh, loan portfolio guaranteeing program. And basically what the state is doing is that we have a $50 million allocation uh, of which the banks statewide are eligible to uh, participate in sharing in this pot of pool of money. Um, we opened a period, had a period uh, of uh, uh, in, intended participation. Uh, we've gotten the response back from the banking community statewide. And we um, have a number of banks, I think our last count was approximately, uh, we're looking at about 30 banks that are, will be participating in this. And what the state's program will do will be to allocate the, um, a certain dollar amount to each of the participating banks. Uh, and they would in turn get a guarantee from the state for up to, uh, for not up to, but for 25% of whatever their portfolio is. It's not going to be on a per loan basis, but it's going to be guaranteeing them 20% of their uh, portfolio. For example, if somebody wants, say, uh, a $500,000, um, uh, or let's say a million dollars, uh, portfolio allocation, and uh, we will guarantee 20% of that entire portfolio. The response was fantastic. We wrote it uh, to, to the banking community, the, the commercial banks, um, and then after the program was rolled out, then our credit unions uh, decided that they wanted to come in as well, and we didn't exclude them. Uh, we just used the, the medium of the Louisiana Bankers Association to help us to get the, the broadest reach that we could get with the program. Uh, so um, it's going well. We're into day three of um, this program. Uh, we're in the process of preparing the guarantee agreement. Uh, the main important thing is that the um, the application for the program will go directly um, to the bank, but the uh, Louisiana Public Facilities Authority, or LPFA as we're accustomed to calling it, uh, is acting as an agent for LED to um, help us with the uh, distribution of these guarantee agreements. Um, ours is 
a little different uh, from um, from SBA. As we know we affectionately say that we're not in competition with SBA. You know, we have a limited amount of money, and when the federal government needs more money, y'all just the, the, the SBA just uh, prints it. Uh, we've got a finite uh, amount of money, so um, that's what we're we, we've been looking at. Um, our interest rate for this program is a maximum of 3.5% um, the, to the, the lender uh, institutions that they can charge up to three and a half. Uh, we are uh, getting feedback that it will probably be less than that, but we're giving them the latitude to do their general underwriting and look at the uh, history of use their, their own underwriting criteria. Um, the maximum loan amount for uh, for this particular program is would be a hundred thousand dollars, and so um, we're we're hopeful that um, by the uh, the end of today, I know later than Monday, uh, coming up shortly, we'll be fully subscribed uh, with our our fifty million dollar um, uh, pool and allocation. Um, it's pretty straightforward uh we too have some um uh, ineligibles um uh, that we're uh, companies that won't be eligible for this program and of course those are the the gaming uh real estate speculation uh however we have included in our program uh the restaurants um we know that the um, the New Orleans area and Louisiana uh, statewide, you know, we rely on our, our small restaurants. So we have um, made this program so that uh, restaurants in your, and our other main street businesses can participate in this, including uh, agricultural type uh, industries. So um, it's gaining traction as we speak. And uh, so we are uh, looking forward to um, the success of this program that we know it will be uh, from in helping our businesses uh, in this manner uh, throughout this time. Okay, great. So, thank you, Brenda. And just to clarify, how does this um, can this uh, how does this relate to the um, PPP and the other programs that are being provided by SBA? Uh, that's a question that I hope to get answered today. Um, uh, we have not, uh, uh, we're unsure, and I'm hoping that we can, can get something from um, Sahin uh, on that. Uh, we've been getting that question asked all the time, even when the bankers saw our draft uh, agreements and the draft information piece for on the program. Their concern is this going to prohibit any of their borrowers if they take advantage of our program, if it will prohibit um, their borrowers participating in any of the, the SBA program. So um, I'm hoping we can, Sahin, if you can maybe uh, when we get to some question and answers or now if, if you think that's appropriate. Okay. Uh, perhaps given the extensive nature of it, we perhaps wait till the end, if that's okay, Stephen and Brian. That's fine. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I think if you actually, if you, um, you, we can either wait to the end, Shashil, or you can just go ahead and, and, uh, and address it now if you'd like. I think we're ready for the. Um... So basically the question is. Uh, we ask I... questions, let me throw out a couple of things of information. If that's okay. Right. All right. So um, I was hoping to have a slide prepared for this, but I want to address a couple of things uh, that people need to be aware of. Number one is, uh, and I think Stephen mentioned it in the beginning and, and uh, Sushil reiterated it, is that there are a, a tremendous, huge amounts of information out there. It's, it's data overload, info overload. There are some really good sources of information and there's really, you know, sources that are questionable. And there are a number of items that are out there floating out that are incorrect. So I want to caution uh, you as you gather your information to make sure you're 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 seeking uh, adequate counsel and that the information that's presented is up to date as of whatever timeline it it um, it, it is and uh, the source has been verified. 
Um, it's evident that that exists because both Shashil and I have seen uh, the different things that we subscribe to in inaccurate information and had to reach out to the source and ask them where did they get their source of information because the, what they were publishing was not in uh, you know not not correct. So here, let me uh, let me show you the magnitude of this thing in a, here in a, uh, a second. Uh, you know today's April third on March twenty seventh. President Trump signed into law uh, the CARES Act. And with the caveat that uh, it be implemented, the PPP program be implemented today, April 3rd. That is seven days from the act. So if you think about it, once he signed it on Friday of last week, that act had to go to SBA and the Treasury and all the other agencies that are part of that act to write all the rules that are needed. Last night, after seven o'clock our time, um, the Treasury posted final uh, interim rules for the banks. And in the chat box, I just uh, sent out a list of websites that you can go straight to the source to get information. Um, I was hoping to give a summary of the, um, the final rules to the bank, but uh, because of time, I haven't been able to do that. But in future, we'll, we'll, we'll have that. So, so SBA at this moment is still uh, formulating their rules uh, that in guidance to the bank. Uh, unprecedented times, as Sushil mentioned. And I just want to let it settle that the president signed this order on the this law bill into law on the 27th of March. Today's Friday, April 3rd, one week away, and the 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 program is launched as we speak. I, I don't historically in my lifetime, a week's time, that's never happened. Um, and there are a lot of things and nuances to it that still haven't been published. And so the idea here is this. There are a lot of, uh, let's call it, we all in South Louisiana love sports. We all like to armchair quarterback things. And, you know, that's part of our free speech. But in this space and in this time, we got to really make sure that, that information is accurate um, and we know the source and so forth. Right. So the thing is, is that today launches the business side of it. And at some point next week, which I can't find the exact date, the next week for the PPP program for independent contractors and sole proprietors, that window will open. Uh, that's I saw the 10th. Press that's April 10th, right? I believe. I believe, okay. Ron, that's April 10th for independent April contractors. 10th. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. So, so the biggest question is I need, there's so much of a fever going in and trying to get these things in the bank. The banks don't know the full ramifications of what their liability is going to be in exposure. And so, yes, it's the bank's problem. Yes, it's the government's problem. But we all have to find some sense of, of uh, cooler heads prevail and calm because we're seeing lots of um, uncertainty and lots of additional anxiety, which is, you know, could be understood with a situation like this. Um, but I will say that everybody behind the scenes is working very, very hard. Uh, the district office at SBA in New Orleans is working, uh, you know, uh, really hard in trying to help get as many lenders on board as possible. There's a new website in the SBA link that I put in the chat box. There's a link to find a lender that, that is certified to either do the express loan or to do the um, PPP program. And every day that's going to change. So I just want to make you aware of that, that, that unprecedented time. Normally when a law comes into play, it's, there's a 30 day, there's a time period where the agencies have to go out and uh, prepare the rules, open for co public comment, uh, and then that's usually a 30 to 90 days or longer. And then they come back, finalize the rules, publish, and the program's implemented. So one week is incredible. Sure. Uh, hats off to those behind the scenes uh, on doing this. And, and it, not everybody realizes that, um, you know, it's, it's really just an unbelievable um, process that's, that's taken place uh, as we speak. 
Absolutely, Brian. And we appreciate you and Cecile and, and Brenda being with us today to try to help us uh, sort this out. And as Brian has said, you know, this is what we know today as of, you know, April 3rd on at 10 o'clock. And I know Brian was up late last night um, going through this. So if we could, we have um, some questions and we'll yep. go ahead and start um, start talking about that. If we could address the affiliate, <clears throat> uh, the affiliate rule, um, seeing some questions as it relates to that. So yeah, so Sushil, the question is, are distributions to the partners of a partnership including included in the uh, PPP uh, cost uh, calculation? The, the short answer I'll offer is it's asking for an aggregate number for payroll costs, aggregate. So what's on your income statement, if it's aggregated on it, that's what goes in there. Okay. Um, another question, what type of current loans can the money be used to pay for? Uh, on the economic injury side or this is on the PPP side? Um, let's do both. Economic injury, any and all current, uh, current liabilities, anything that you would normally list on your schedule form 2202. And um, that could be very easily gotten off the web. Or if you don't okay. have it, Stephen, I'll be glad to shoot it to you. Okay. Uh, just type in PDF form 2202 SBA schedule of liabilities. Nope. Then it pops up and it'll, um, while we're doing this, is it possible for uh, one of the ladies to pop it up and pop later on our screen so everyone sees it so that there is no sense of consternation? Yeah. Um, so any and all expenses that you would normally list on it is what okay. my program would cover. Rent, mortgage, um, payroll costs would be on it. Folks, the okay. PPP program, very specifically, is a stimulus. It, it captures and wants employment to be at a certain number as of date. You pick the eight weeks that you want it to cover. And after that, the reliance on the economic injury piece comes in two separate formats. The, the assistance of the SBA was expanded to include payroll and the need for the economy to have full employment. So check with your CPA, your trusted financial advisor, when you fill out the form. The mindset was that the banks would be the lender for these funds under their normal distribution channels. For folks, the 65 participants on our call today, if any one of you has gotten a 7A loan from a bank, this is very much a 7A loan. The key difference, or in this case differences, are it's 100% guaranteed by the, by the SBA. It's a one-pager. Interest rates, deferments, when the payback starts, is commensurate with our economy, which is OMG. There's a lot of consternation about when do I have to pay this back? Take a look at the PPP. I think the maximum interest rate was raised overnight from 0.5 to 1% and look at the key details. So one is a stimulus specific to labor. And if you don't use it for labor and rent and utilities, that portion is forgiven. Not forgiven, I should say. So. Take a close look at it, work with your CPAs, and figure out what you need to apply for on the PPP side. We, the program was created as an expansion of the economic injury that businesses may have incurred and make a portion of it forgivable. Okay, thank you, Sushil. So um, there seems to be some questions. I think you mentioned a Monday, uh, uh, before we handed it off to Shield to Brenda, you mentioned something about a Monday. And the, one of the question says, did you say we would not be able to get the 10K advance if we applied before the past Monday, before the next Monday? Oh, let me try to break it down even further. Thank you. This past Monday, five days ago, our website incorporated the use of advances up to $10,000 as part of our overall lending pattern. 
if you have not applied ever before with the SBA, there would be no concern for you to reapply. The reapply part applies for those businesses that prior to this past Monday did not have an option to apply for the $10,000 potential advance. So my comment was it opened on Monday. If you applied on Monday or after that, sometimes during this week, you don't have to reapply for the businesses that applied prior to this new rollout, they need to come back and reapply for the advance if they want one. If they don't want one, that's fine. And is the $10,000 based on a number of employees? That's correct. Up right. to $10,000. Yes, sir. Okay, great. And then another question. Some materials that I've received says that if an employer has received the EIDL of 10,000 should not apply uh, more should not apply for the um, needed PPP loan. Okay. If you were to compare yeah. side by side EIDL proceeds and PPP proceeds, one thing stands out glaringly. Paying, your pro paying for your product, paying your supply chain is not listed on the PPP. Everything about the PPP is about payroll. That's why it's called Paycheck Protection Program. It is also meant to protect the capacity of the business from being evicted. So that's why they have that piece. Then they have the piece about the utilities. That's why they have that piece. Everything else is supposed to come from the economic injury disaster loan that we have in place. And the distribution channel was decided upon by the banks so that the banks could do their share of lending money to their cust existing customers and or new customers that are normally not in the 7A channel. Okay, great. Another question is, when is the EIDL loan considered to have been made? Is it when the application has been submitted or when the uh, when proceeds are received? Just like any other loan, the day you sign the loan docs and the day when you get the money. Okay, great. Can you talk a little bit more about the SBA sole proprietor loan? It's no different than any other loan that you might have. It's based on a Schedule C. It's based on your revenue manager expenses. Go to the application format, answer the question, get the proceeds that you need. If you could expand on what specifically I need to yeah. clarify for sole prop, that'd be great because a sole prop loan is no different than a loan to um, um, any other entity because he, the gentleman happens to be a uh, Schedule C and that's what he or she chose to um, to um, incorporate under. So the question needs to be expanded for me to give a even more broader answer. Sure, okay. Um, I'm in a situation where my payroll and benefits costs have increased substantially um, in the past three to six months. I implemented a benefit program in November of last year and have hired new employees in Q1 of this year. Can I use my current monthly costs or do I have to still use the average cost over the last 12 months even though it'll be lower calculated over monthly cost, or can I use my Q1 numbers for that calculation? Please look for guidance from the Treasury's website. It's uh, as that's what I'm using. So my interpretation um, is consistent with what they have listed out there. I would want to mislead the gentleman or the lady asking the question. Please take your guidance from home.treasury.gov, where and where there's a hyperlink there for borrowers, and there's an FAQ associated with it and it tells you how to calculate appropriate payroll costs. Hey, I added the uh, website link in the chat box for everyone. That's right, I think I just see it. Where is it? Is that the home.treasury.gov policy issues? Yeah, that's the one, okay. Mm -hmm. Is that the okay. one that has that four hyperlinks, Brian? Yes. For borrowers, for lender? Okay, perfect. Can, do you wanna click on it, to one of you folks, and bring that up so that people can see it? Lauren, can you do that, please? Another question about the $10,000. If they applied for the EIDL and did not apply for the 10,000 grant at the time, do they need to start an application over again? Yes. Okay. And then um, Tim is asking, Tim Boone's asking, can you apply for both the SBA and the state loan programs? I thought that you could, you could. Um, okay, never mind. Yeah. So, um, 
So I'm sorry, the, the, just when I get ready to uh, ask a question, <laughs> it moves on me. Um, some material I received says that if you received a loan, you cannot apply okay, that. Um, Okay, calculations of the PP loan. If, a, if an independent contractor has employees, the business is an LLC, can the contractor include his owner draw in the calculations of the loan amount for PPP? Again, please take guidance from the link that uh, I think uh, Lauren is trying to hyperlink right now. And, yeah, that, um, we're, that on that question, uh, mm -hmm. the banks are asking for further clarification from SBA. Uh, and so in the rules that SBA publishes, hopefully today or tomorrow, uh, we'll give the banks guidance in, in terms of how to calculate or how to incorporate the uh, independent contractors. Business owners of the LLC. Yeah, of the LLC, right. Yeah, that's the SBA website. It's the, <laughs> the home.treasury. Okay. If they um, complete the entire application again, will they have two application numbers? Uh, one application number and uh, one reference number, I believe. When you finish the streamline process at the very end, there is a reference number that's posed. I guess the question is being asked, hey, uh, Lauren, just type in home.treasury.gov for now, please, and then go into, um, yeah, home.treasury.gov. And Brian, you want to help her out while I answer that? Why don't you go ahead and help her out, then I'll answer the question that, um, it's yeah. she's asking that go okay. spelled the, the sole the question about the sole proprietor loan was asked if, if it has to be repaid i am confused by the question of uh, course yeah. it has to yeah. be repaid if it's click an economic budget. disaster loan it's not yeah click click the red bar at, at, towards the top of the screen please there you go if you see the, uh, the format there for top line overview of the program, click here. If you're a lender, click here. If you're a borrower, click here. So let's click on the borrower if you don't mind. There's your details. Do you want to scroll past it, Lauren, so that everybody gets to see it or you know, make it whatever you guys want to do it? Yeah. So and again, there you go. There's the payroll cost definition right there. Great. So again, that's home.treasury.gov. Yes, sir. And then there's a bar at the very top that Brian talked about. Click on it, and it literally opens up, whether you're a borrower or a lender, whoever it is, and there is your exact definition, what counts as payroll costs. And it says payroll costs, including benefits. Great. Okay. Right. You had another question that we stopped while we, uh, Brian and Lauren, were working together on the website. I forget what it, what it was. Apologize. Um, I, oh, um, if they complete if they complete the entire application again and have to reapply, will they have two application numbers? Uh, no, they wouldn't. One's a reference okay. number. One's an application number, and the system systems are talking to each other. Okay. The only reason for reapplication is to take advantage of the advance of up to $10,000 for those folks. Okay, great. Um, I've heard that if you apply for the 7B first, you could not then go back and apply for the 7A. But if you apply for the 7A first, you can then apply for 7B. Is that true? Um, acronyms are confusing me. Open it up for me. Are you talking about the, P the, the PPP and then our economic injury? I think that's what you're asking. Because that's economic in, injury 7B and then the 7A is the, the PPP. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, so if you apply for the, B, the 7B first, then go back uh, and apply for 7A. But if you apply for the 7A first, you can then apply for the 7B. Is that true? Again, again the, the whole mindset of first and second is moot. The working capital is inclusive of all potential current liabilities due. The, Paych the Paycheck Protection Act is very, very specific to what you can use it for. If you could scroll it up a little further, see what can these loans for, leave it right there. 
If you were to compare our program to the 7A 100% SBA guarantee loan, you'll see those are the specific uses of the 7A 100% guarantee by the SBA. Ours expands on it. So the notion that, um, that you can separate the two, that's where it is. So you can apply for both as long as you don't need to um, um, don't use the funds for the same purpose intended. And by the way, Stephen, I've got a uh, I've got a uh, conference call at nine my time, eleven o'clock your time. Okay. So perhaps perhaps uh, if somebody else wants to jump in, or if you want me to have a bunch of the questions answered, and then I get off the call, I'll leave okay. it up to you. Okay. I'm sure Brian can uh, jump in as as well with this. Uh, we appreciate this. And again, um, as we said, Doc, um, and um, Brian, why don't you go ahead and repeat those websites that you um, think are the best ones that people, as this progresses and um, rules are constantly changed and added to, that you recommend people go to? We, we mentioned Treasury, which is on the screen right now. And then someone was also asking for the SBA website. Can you um, tell us? what um, the address specifically on the SBA website you recommend um, people go to get answers? Yeah, just go to the SBA.gov. I think he got kicked off. Um, oh, okay. And um, uh, he just texted me, he goes, so Sheila, I got kicked off and oh. uh, that was it. So um, <laughs> um, go to the SBA.gov website real quick. Let's see, Lauren, there you go. Thank you, Lauren. There you go. Learn more. Everything there is name. Okay. Another question for you, Cecile. Can um, utilities does it, uh, it includes communication communication costs like internet? I would consider that utilities. Yeah. I, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Um, if you receive both the EIDL and the PP loans, can you use the EIDL loan to pay payroll, rent, and utilities after? the eight week period that the PPP covers? As long as there's no duplication of benefits, correct. Cannot duplicate benefits for the same period from two different pots of money. Right. And then and the person's asking, can they apply, apply for the PP now? When does the, they start taking applications? They've started taking applications as of this morning. As of this morning. And then the um, for independent contractors is April 10th, right, Sushil? You know, uh, you can apply for uh, with us now right. for independent contractors. Okay. I don't, I don't know what the visibility is on the PPP side because that comes from the district office. I just happen to know some of the answers to the questions, but most of it comes from the district office side. That would be Michael Ricks. And if I get, if I get a chance, I'll try to get you that information. Okay, great. And so Shil, can you talk a little bit about how these, um, these programs affect our, our very early stage companies, our pre-revenue companies? The basis is that you have to be in business prior to February the 1st. And um, after that, it's very much an, an application Q&A process that we talked about. Mm -hmm. So as long as they were in business prior to the, uh, the injury period, which I believe is February the 1st and onward, right. uh, they certainly are eligible to apply. Okay. Great, that's simple enough. Uh, someone is asking that their bank isn't taking applications. How do you apply? So you go to SBA first, right, Sushil? Uh, no, sir, not at all, no, not at all. No. The, uh, the, the, pay, the oh, paycheck the protection is, has nothing to do with our portal. It has everything to do with banks. So right. let's say you have a relationship with Chase, go to Chase. You don't have a relationship with Chase. Someone has a bank account somewhere. Go to that bank right. and check and see if they're an SBA approved lender. If they're not, then go to one that is. And if you go to our um, um, sba.gov forward slash LA forward slash New Orleans, they'll come up with the resource guide. I tell you what, to make it easy, I'll just shoot you the, uh, the, the list of banks which are uh, approved 7A lenders because those are the lenders that are dispersing the funds directly yeah. into uh, people's bank accounts. Our role is on the back end where we're just guaranteeing the loans. So that there is no SBA application for the PPP. Yeah, I'm sorry, I misspoke on that. And we're also no, no, no if you yeah, if you have a relationship with a bank and they are an SBA, um, it's best to stay with stay with someone that already knows you and knows your banking habits. Um, generally speaking, that's a fair that's a fair yeah. bet. Yeah. 
does does the EIDL cover payroll already paid, i.e., March first to current? Of course. Yeah. I mean, again, the question then becomes: if you've already paid it. Yeah. And what you're trying to do is is find a way to pay for those bills that you haven't had a chance to pay yet. So you wouldn't yeah. claim that as economic injury. You would you would say that as, oh my God, what have I not paid? Right, right, right. So you can't you don't you can't recoup payroll costs because that's what you were supposed to pay. So if you paid it, the fact that you didn't have a revenue a corresponding revenue, um, that's where we come in in the form of liquidity. We're trying to have you pay bills that you have not been able to pay. I believe the question is is posed for the forgiveness piece. Can you claim it and then you know and then give it forgiven? That's a different ballgame completely. Okay. Yeah, I see that. Um, yeah, some banks are are, are getting ready to um, take applications. I would uh, just keep an eye on them as they prepare to do this. As Brian and Sushil know all too well, that this is. Um, this this came came down quickly and it's very complicated and I know a lot of our partners are trying to um, to figure all the rules out with this. So we're about running out of time. So Sheila, I know that you have to hop on another call. We appreciate your time so much. This is our second time that uh, you have agreed to uh, to be with us, and I know that uh, you're on the uh, over on the west coast, so this is even earlier for you. So thank you so much for everything that you have uh, provided for us today. Um, looks like Brian is um, isn't going to be able to get back on the line with us. Uh, anything before uh, we part ways, Sushil? Any closing words or anything else that you'd like to let everyone know before you um, before we um, part ways this morning? One is uh, much more of a sweeping remark: be patient. Um, I know it's hard to um, to say uh, be patient when so much around us is going uh, going absolutely uh, nuts and changes in the air. Apply with us for the economic injury disaster loan, please. Yes, Apply with great. the PPP Absolutely. and um, compare the two. PPP is an expansion of our program and is very specific to what it wants to accomplish. Two separate policy prescriptions. One is long-term, one is specific to an eight-week period. Pick and choose. Yes, you can apply for both. Deferments, it's up to a year for us. 275 fixed for nonprofits. 375 fix for us for small business of all sizes. Six months worth of working capital upfront into people's bank accounts. And funding is usually two to three weeks. Take advantage of uh, what uh, LED rolled out for the $100,000. Take advantage of what programs are out there and see what all shakes out. I hate to say that word shakes out. We're in unprecedented times. So do what's necessary to stay afloat, resilient, and then thrive. We'll get through this. Great. Thank you so much, Cecile. I appreciate your time. Brenda. Uh, yes, I just have one quick uh, uh, thing before uh, Cecile jumps off. I may connect with you uh, after your conference call for a second. If you have time, I'll, I'll shoot you an email. Perfect. And, and Stephen, uh, as yep. many as you need for you and your firm and for the businesses of Louisiana, I'm here to help. As long as I have advance notice, I'm glad to spend time with the business owners because it's valuable time for all of us. And whatever I need to do to give back, I'll be more than glad to do so. And I appreciate your patronage, hospitality, and your inclusiveness. Much appreciated. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Cecilia. You've been very generous with your time. Brenda, before we uh, go, do you have any closing comments or thoughts that you um, about the um, about the Louisiana Loan Portfolio Guarantee Program before we sign off? No, I, I'm just like Cecile, we encourage uh, <clears throat> those of you who are uh, maybe in contact with uh, some of the uh, economic development organizations statewide, also in the banking community, that the program is up running and alive. Um, I've, my email has been going off as we've been talking, and uh, uh, I think that uh, with all of the resources that are available, uh, I think that we can make a, a difference. and. Um, I want to thank you guys for putting this together again, and hopefully uh, going forward that we'll be able to come back and, and give more, um, uh, some positive uh, feedback of how many banks we've been able to enroll. Uh, we've got right now all of our regions covered, and so we'll be looking at those that aren't covered if there ends up, ends up being someone to do some reallocations to make sure that we reach out to everyone across the state. 
Great. And Brenda, what's a good website to find out more information about the state? Guarantee our, our website is uh, www.opportunitylouisiana.com slash COVID-19. Great. Thank you so much, Brenda. And again, just a reminder that we this uh, webinar is being recorded and we will um, post it. It'll probably go up um, um, given the, that the technology guides are good to us this, uh, early this afternoon because I know we've uh, some of the answers and some of the websites went by fairly quickly, but uh, we appreciate your patience with that, but it will be recorded. And again, this is what we know as of 10 o'clock today, April 3rd, 2020. And um, so we appreciate your patience and we appreciate all of our, uh, our uh, panelists and uh, participating today. Today's a webinar wouldn't have happened without our great team at Nexus LA, which includes Wendy, Connor, Lauren, and Dee. Thank you all, all so much for that. Of course, Genevieve Silverman, thank you for your support. Please visit us on the web at latechpark.com or on our many social media channels for updates to this and other information that entrepreneurs need to know. We will continue to have these Tech Park Academies as soon, as many as we need to, as, as, as quickly as we can, as the information is always changing. Again, I'm Stephen Loy. For everyone here, please stay healthy and safe. Thank you so much.